Yo, what it is, YouTube? It's your boy Nitsy coming back with another bulls of a tutorial here today on the channel. I wanted to speak about when is the right time to use an analog compressor or a digital compressor. I think both of them are, you know, amazing ingredients, you know, when it comes to the, the kitchen of making music, which is the studio. And like, let's try to understand that they're, they both definitely do have a place inside of, you know, the production of making music. So I wanted to just talk about that a little bit today. And I love this little um, Fat Filter Pro C. We're going to go over that as well, compare it to a couple of other things that i think are important just want to say thanks a lot for you guys supporting me if you guys do have any more comments or questions drop it down below we more than happy to get to it so let's not waste none of the time let's not waste a second let's jump right into the music let's get to the gems let go hey rick <laughs> i don't know what to believe no more like everything i hear is a lie to my face i don't want to give out the benefit of the doubt i done seen what she on and i seen what she got yeah, every time i think about these streets and make a nigga my my own pants i better my mind to sense it's better for me in the end I don't know what to believe no more Like everything I hear is a lie to my face I don't wanna give out the benefit of the doubt I done seen what she on and I seen what she got Every time I think about these streets And make a nigga my my own biz I better my mind two cents It's better for me in the end Every time we spin the block, a nigga start getting them flashbacks Every time I try to take a step forward out of hood, it feel like a nigga running to a setback Gon' finesse a nigga, he won't get his cash back Now I'm bringing up the plug, I need a gas pack If she ever talk about her ex, then my nigga, that's a red flag I don't, I don't got time for no blues coming from you unless we talking about the ones Woo! So let's jump into this today. So the, I think the Fab Filter Pro C is a very interesting plugin. And I just wanted to talk about the actual like um, parts of compression pretty much essentially. So very first thing that we got to understand about compression that it was always a thing to um, help people um, listen to others, you know, because in real life, a lot of the times um, a signal that can be very compressive, very dense is going to hold up. It's going to be easier for you to hear, you know, something that's focused on a TV or a camera screen is a lot easier for you to pay attention to. It's kind of like you feel me in a situation where, um, you know, sometimes you might have like a white sheet of paper, but then when you put just one dot on it, like you can really focus on that dot. But if you had a white sheet of paper and you had a hundred million dots on it, well, it's going to be really hard for you to, to focus on that bit because like it's a lot of stuff going on. So that's the thing about compression is it just helps bring focus. There's many ways that compression can be used for like movement, tone, weight, all of that stuff. But one thing that I always hate and I'm going to keep continuously mentioning I'm not the type of person that um, I don't I don't like to repeat stuff unless it really matters. But compression is not about taming peaks. If you use an optical compressor in the very beginning, your vocals will come out like this. Now, I did track it with compression. But if you don't have a UAD uh, console, that doesn't matter. You know, all you have to do is take like an optical compressor and put it on one to two dB. And essentially the reason why optical compressors work so well with the human vocals, because, you know, when people get a little bit happy, they start to get a little bit louder. You know, it's just a perfect for the way a human vocal works, which is a very dynamic thing like we are literally dynamic people you know what i mean so you know usually if you track with some compression it will you know everything will come out smooth like this so you know in a situation like that all the compression afterwards you can feel a little bit better about yourself just knowing that hey okay i don't have this big old part like before i used to track with compression or put an optical compressor in the front, you know, you might have like this big old peak right here and then this little old peak. And essentially what's gonna happen is that the compressor like might start working too hard at a certain part and it might just sound weird. So it's kind of good to use an optical compressor in the, uh, the very beginning um, to just kind of help smoothen out the performance. So all of your compression that comes after that bit is all about tone, you know, lemon pepper, honey, garlic, all the sauce, the seasoning to get the actual flavor and the taste. So that brings me back to something like Fab Filter Pro C. And I think this, a uh, compressor is pretty good you know usually um i'm gonna show today about how when do i use an analog or a digital so that's my main idea of the video just to let y'all know and with this one right here let's look at something like uh the fab filter pro c and you know essentially the threshold is kind of like a situation where it's like where does the compression start pretty much so uh, a lot of the times back in the day a lot of those compressors they had their own threshold which would be called a fixed threshold but this one is a variable threshold so this is kind of like think about the threshold like when you when you used to go to the park and used to play ball or something like that so a fixed threshold is like okay they have their ball they gonna pick what court or what field 
we play on. A variable threshold is like when you have your own ball and you bringing it to the park. Now you're going to be like, oh, we're going to play over there or over there. You get to decide where the game of mixing starts. So then the ratio to me is like the density of the compression, how skinny or fat the compression is. We're going to look at that. Usually if I'm going to look for like a movement or the tone, like what I'm talking about, like to, you know, control my vocal, I will go with a very light ratio. Most of the time I use a light ratio. The only time I use heavy, heavier ratios is when I really want the compression to be like a big brother. So a higher ratio is kind of like the big brother. I really want it to influence the sound like character wise, make it speak a little bit different. Like, oh, kind of grab that little jit and just shake them a little bit. But a lighter compression is kind of like, oh, yeah, you can do what you want. I'm just telling you. It's kind of like a, a little, a smaller brother trying to talk to a bigger brother. You know what I mean? It's not really going to have as much influence on the song, but it can sway in a certain direction, you know, depending on the material. After that, you have the attack time. That's like the start, um, the positioning of where you want the car to be in the race. So a a faster attack will set stuff in the back, but a slower attack will help it be a little bit more open and sound quote unquote a little bit more forward. And then after that, you have the release time. So the release time is how quickly does that bit, you, you know, kind of jump off the line. It's kind of like a track racer, you know, it could be in the back of the race, but as soon as, you know, the flag comes down, zoom, it's, it darts quickly. So that's what the release time is like, how quickly do that bit dart? And then you have the knee. The knee is pretty important when it comes to like higher ratios, because the knee is like the transition in between uh, the compression. Then I like I really like this fat filter as well because it brings in the range and range is a pretty interesting thing tonally because range will set like the maximum amount like number wise of how much compression that big gonna do so something that I know is like the Elysia compressor the compression is like one of those compressors that has that feature but pretty much what it is you gotta understand that you can push the threshold even lower to get more grit I feel like it works best on the Elysia but pretty much here's what it is the range stops it like let's say if I want two dB max but as soon as I keep pulling down that threshold more and more it's gonna give me like more uh tonal coloration i feel like it works best in the alicia it's still cool that this uh compressor does have that but i feel like that's something that is a pretty interesting thing as well and then also you have like the side chain and we gotta also understand too that a lot of the times with a vocal even if you don't have a deep voice just in general most of the energy of a vocal usually comes from the lows because the low part of a vocal pretty much like the mid range is where the sustaining energy is. So that energy is building up, building up, building up. It's either going to be mostly in the low mid or in the higher mid, but the higher mid, even though it might have a lot of energy, it moves like a lot faster. You know, it comes in and out a lot quicker. Look at it real quick. Hey, Rick. <laughs> Every time I think about these streets to make a nigga my, my own biz, I better my mind to sense, better for me in the end. I don't know what to believe no more Like everything I hear is a lie to my face I don't wanna give out the benefit of the doubt I done seen what she on and I seen what she doing Every time I think about these streets So it's usually very important to understand You know where the hell the energy is coming from Because how much energy and where it's hitting the compressor You know is gonna depend on how the compressor like kind of reacts You feel me? So you, as you saw right there that higher mid energy Even though it wasn't you know as high with the uh, You know how high it was going up It was still quicker it's still all over the place it's like a little jet you know a little brother just ha, 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 all over the place you know but the lower mid type of energy is a lot more sustaining i always say that it's kind of like splashes of water the high mid is like splash squirt 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 splash it's kind of like water and then the lower mid is like water too but it's kind of like a wave that's kind of slow and you know if you ever went to the beach the tide kind of rocks back and forth so let's also talk about why i think that you know um, a digital to analog compressor type of situation is important to know which one to use when because something like the CL1B, people love the CL1B, but we also got to understand that the thing about a lot of those throwback compressors, um, like the optical compressors, they did not allow people to, you know, really go in there and dial in the attack and the release. That's something cool about, you know, something like the Fat Filter Pro C is that you have all these different types. So the clean is kind of like the all around type of, you know, general compressor. I like to use that for mostly like, um, you know, when I'm trying to use it as like my first layer of compression, maybe to like to control something, you know? And then after that, you have something like the classic and the opto which is kind of modeling some of those older type of um compressors you know what i mean and those a lot of the times those compressors are a lot more smoother they usually have a slower characteristics how they react to the material even if you make the attack time as fast as it could be it just has a slower nature usually that was because of like the parts that them boys was using 
And also a thing about them older compressors too, big is that they used to um you know they used to have their own attack and release time like the Fairchild, you know the um LA two A, you know. But that's kind of where the CL one B came into the game and messed it up a little bit because it gave them the ability to adjust the attack and the release time. So let's look at the difference between using something like um you know the Fab Filter Pro C versus against something like the CL1B even though they're both great for the job you know there's a certain thing that one ingredient gives that the other really can't and that's kind of like the, the the components you know which is like the tube tape it got tubes on the inside and the outside of the the input stage so let's look at this real quick every time we spin the block a nigga start getting them flashbacks every time i try to take a step forward out of hood it feel like a nigga running to a setback going for this a nigga he won't get his cash back now i'm bringing up the plug i need a gas pack if she ever talk about her ex then my nigga that's a red flag I don't, I, every time we spin the block a nigga start getting them flashbacks every time i try to take a step forward out of hood it feel like a nigga running to a setback going for this a nigga he won't get his cash back now i'm bringing up the plug i need a gas pack if she ever talk about her ex, then my nigga, that's a red flag. I don't, I, every time we spin the block, a nigga start getting them flashbacks. Every time I try to take a step forward out of hood, it feel like a nigga running to a setback. Gonna finesse a nigga, he won't get his cash back. Now I'm bringing up the plug, I need a gas pack. If she ever talk about her ex, then my so I really like to use something like this, which is the um, Pro C. Let's also just check the settings real quick. So, um, yeah, we only doing like one to two dB, kind of like a tonal type of thing. So that's what um, you know, compression can be about too, the tone, the language of the music, how I've been speaking. So slow attack to help the vocal, you know, stay up forward, and it's all coming down to like that high mid transient energy. Like that transient is kind of like the distance, you know. So you gotta always understand that EQ is kind of like distance and compression is too. But I use the really um, you know, fast release as well, just because um, you know, there's not really that much peaks or anything like that my vocal is really already leveled like i said use the optical compressor in the beginning like a two-way or whatever just do one to two db and it's gonna smoothen out your vocal so yeah pretty much uh my my release was fast just because i still wanted it to use it in a tonal way where the fast release lets all of the life of the words in between come through and you just hear like this compressor adds the life to it which is amazing so the vocal preset that's a pretty good one too you know i really like it just because it squeezes the mid-range and if you can squeeze the mid-range and make it that bit sound a little bit more compact it's gonna make the vocal feel like it's a little bit forward because the low mid energy is kind of like the distance it's literally like your heartbeat you know what i mean you know if you put your hand on your heart like what, what type of frequencies you hear exactly and what's closest to you is your heart so your brain already identifies low mid energy as like size and distance, like very close distance. So cool. All right, let's listen um, to that bit compared to the CL1B. And the CL1B, like I said, it messed up the game a little bit because, you know, it brought in that side chain compressor like the Pro C does, but this one is in a hardware form. And the attack time, you know, you get variable attack and release. So that's why people love it. I'm going to do another video going in, in depth about it. But I use the higher ratio here. And like I said, uh, I like to use it sometimes to impart the tone. I want the big brother to kind of grab the signal and have an influence on it. So that's why I use the higher ratio here. Let's listen. Every time we spin the block, a nigga start getting them flashbacks. Every time I try to take a step forward out of hood, it feel like a nigga running to a setback. Gonna finesse a nigga, he won't get his cash back. Now I'm bringing up the plug, I need a gas pack. If she ever talk about her ex, then my nigga, that's a red flag. I don't, every time we spin the block, a nigga start getting them flashbacks. Every time I try to take a step forward out of hood, it feel like a nigga running to a setback. Gonna finesse a nigga, he won't get his cash back. Now I'm bringing up the plug, I need a gas pack. If she ever talk about her ex, then my nigga, that's a red flag. I don't, I, every time we spin the block. So the thing about the CL1B is that it just is adding a lot of more weight, a lot more tone. But that's the thing, though. Fat Filter Pro C does not have the benefits of the components like the tube in and out to give it some of that, um, you know, type of Cajun, cayenne, seasoning, lemon pepper type of situation. So that's why sometimes, you know, you would want to use a Pro C specifically or sometimes you want to use an analog type of compressor because one is going to add flavor. It's going to still both of them are going to do the job, but in different ways. You know what I mean? So that's what I was trying to talk about, too. And then after that, let's look at the background vocals as well so when usually when it comes to something like background vocals i kind of like them to flam a little bit sometimes i like to make them smooth i might use an optical compressor but this time i want them to flam and flashbacks Okay, it's back. So usually coming down to the signal, you know, understanding the signal and how it's reacting, transient energy or how much sustain that you have in the background vocal. So let's look quick. Come on. I don't know what to believe no more. Like everything I hear is a lie. 
lied to my face, I don't wanna give out the benefit of the doubt I done seen what she on and I seen what she do Every time I think about these streets to make a nigga mind my, my own biz I bet Every time I think about these streets to make a nigga mind my, my own biz I better my mind two cents, it's better for me in the end Every time we spin the block, a nigga start getting them flashbacks Every time I try to take a step forward out of hood, it feel like a nigga running to a setback Gon' finesse a nigga, he won't get his cash back Now I'm bringing up the plug, I need a gas pack If she ever talk about her ex, then my nigga, that's a red flag I don't, I don't got time for no blues coming from you Unless we talking about the ones in your pocket My niggas been popping them shots out them ops up and pumping No BLSA, couldn't even stop it Disappear safe for niggas who don't wanna end them Shot it like an angel, but she got it even I done got it off slab, then I got it off the whim Just me true what I choose, I just really wanna get them I don't know what to believe no more Like everything I hear is a lie to my face I don't wanna give out the benefit of the doubt I done seen what she on and I seen what she brought Every time I think about these streets to me Alright, two different ways I like to um kind of go with the background vocals So let's look at some I usually use The 1176 AE and that's coming down to the ratio Like how I said, the little brother can influence it What way to move, but the bigger brother Which is the big old fat ratio will really start to grab it so we was only doing like 1 to 3 dB just to help something really help the background vocals flam. And because they are background vocals, like I said in the beginning, I used a faster attack. Sometimes I might even use a, a slow attack to open the background vocals wide open. But you got to understand the music because sometimes you do want background vocals that sound wide open. But this one, I wanted it to really blend and like kind of like mesh with the song. So, um, you know. I used the faster attack and the release was somewhat type of slow just because the actual tempo of the music. So release time is actually under, um, you know, type of uh, situation where you got to understand the tempo. Flashbacks, cashbacks. Now, if I was doing a, a, a faster tempo song where it's like flashbacks, cashbacks, flashbacks, flashbacks, See, that would make me use something like a faster release because it's depending on how it clamp, it's clamping down on the signal. So after that, we have the Pro C and, you know, the settings were kind of like the same way, you know, but I used the, uh, the same type of ratio, but I just kind of showed you guys right there that especially with something like uh, the knee, I love to use something like a harder knee for my background vocals if I use the Pro C because it makes it sound way more abrupt. So that was kind of like a little bit of the difference. And we use something like the punch um, style. I just love the fact that, you know, it has so many different styles, but the punch style is kind of like, you have to understand what the, what do you want to get out of the compression before you even do it? And when I use something like punch style, it really just helped the, the background vocals do it exactly what it is, punch through. But that's the thing about it. It's not just one setting that's going to make it do that. It's the, the way you do all of the other controls, like a fast release or a fast kind of attack. So I, I took out the punch to control myself, but pretty much I used the attack time to set the vocals in the background pretty much. So yeah, that's something very important to understand as well. And uh, I don't think I even did too much DB of compression, like maybe like one or two. Every time I think about these streets to make a nigga my my own biz, I better my my two cents. Bring another plug, I need a gas pack. If she ever talk about. So, like I said again, you know, higher ratios, I usually use that to give me like a tonal change the way the music is speaking. But if it's a lighter ratio, it's usually for like movement. And you know, there again, you know, I kept true to my word, a lighter ratio, and it was only doing like one to two dB just to help it move, you know? So you can achieve that via both uh, the uh, Pro C or the 1176. But the thing about the 1176 is it gives some of that grittiness, some of that, that fat components that really just helps it flash back. So that's what the Pro C, I kind of feel like it doesn't do. Although it has a great color, Something about that 1176, the way it just jump out to you. It makes you really feel like, you know, the words is more than just words on a sheet of paper. It's really life that, you feel me, I'm talking about. So then after that, we have something like the 1176. I, I love to use the SC 1176, and uh, I don't like to even do too much DB of compression. Uh, I used all buttons in mode just because I wanted some of that harmonic type of uh, saturation that you do get from the all buttons in mode. It's like something with the bias current. So let's listen to that too. Compare it real quick. Bring another plug, I need a gas pack. If she ever talk about her ex, then my nigga, that's a red flag I don't, I don't got time for no blues coming from you Unless we talking about the ones in your pocket My niggas been popping them shots out them ops up and pumping No BLC, couldn't even stop it Disappear safe in the face I don't wanna give out the benefit of the doubt I done seen what she on and I seen what she do Every time I think about these streets to make A nigga mind my, my own biz I better mind my, my two cents It's better for me in the end
I don't know what to believe no more Like everything I hear is a lie to my face I don't wanna give out the benefit of the doubt I done seen what she on and I seen what she brought Every time I think about these streets to make A nigga mind my own biz I better mind my two cents It's better for me in the end Every time we spin the block, a nigga start getting them flashbacks Every time I try to take a step forward out of hood, it feel like a nigga running to a setback Gon' finesse a nigga, he won't get his cash back Now I'm bringing up the plug, I need a gas pack If she ever turn so yeah, you know, I use something like higher ratios to give a little bit of like a different type of uh, influence on that vocal. And I use the pumping and a really good thing about the pumping is that it really just is kind of like an exaggerated type of compression. Um, and it, you you know, I'm using contrast to help the listener understand what's in between the words. So now I have this thing that's <laughs> pumping, but the lead vocal is kind of like steady and sturdy, you know, like the optical smooth compression and that contrast is just helping the listener really just understand like it's a point of reference for them. You know what I mean? And uh, the thing about that, too, is I used the heavier ratio because, like, you know, I did want it to get a little bit of, like, influence with the way that the, um, you know, the parallel compression was really just jolting off. And I used, uh, you know, a decent type of attack time with a fast release. And that's what the 1176 is known for is, like, the pumping. And the pumping on the parallel is pretty important because it helps bring out the nuances, the hundreds, blah, splash, backs, cash, back. But I like the 1176 a little bit more because it has a warming type of characteristic to it. So, you know, both of these compressors are absolutely incredible but sometimes there's a time when you use digital and there's a time when you use analog both of them gonna do the same job they both gonna go into the soup they both gonna make it taste good i get it but sometimes you got to use a certain ingredient to help convey the message of the um you know the song so that's why i went with 1176 se because it gave me that warming characteristic. It made it feel like a real life conversation. So sometimes I'll use a digital compressor. Sometimes I'll use an analog compressor. So both of them, they are both very important, but you just got to understand when and when not to use them. That's what, uh, you know, I'm trying to get across right here. Then the last thing right here is the bus compressor. So with a bus compressor, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Oh, I even had Ozone 5 on this bit. See, I was going for a warm thing. So yeah, I even had that Ozone 5 on this bit. So yeah, that was helping out too. But uh, after that, you know, we had the API 2500 and the API 2500 is incredible because, you know, it's all about tightening up the uh, 808. You know, usually when it comes to like hip hop um, type of 808s, you know what I mean? Like a hip hop type of, um, you know, two track beat over a vocal, like the 808 is going to be king. If your bus compressor is destroying the 808, then it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter. You literally need to let, let go of it. You don't want no loose booty at 808. So sometimes what you do is you bring in the bus compressor to help tighten up the 808 specifically. Cause like I said, most of the energy of the sustain is like in that low type of, you know, mid, like how I showed you on the fat filter, but let's look at it too. Like every time the 808 is usually hitting, that's when his needle is kind of going off. I don't know what to believe no more Like everything I hear is a lie to my face I don't wanna give out the benefit of the doubt I done seen what she on and I seen what she brought Every time I think about these streets to make A nigga mind my own biz I better mind my two cents It's better for me in the end I don't know what to believe no more Like everything I hear is a lie to my face I don't wanna give out the benefit of the doubt I done seen what she on and I seen what she brought Every time I think about these streets to make A nigga mind my own biz I better mind my two cents It's better for me in the end Every time we spin the block, a nigga start getting them flashbacks Every time I try to take a step forward out of hood, it feel like a nigga running to a setback Gon' finesse a nigga, he won't get his cash back Now I'm bringing So it's kind of like when I bring in that bus compressor, that API 2500 It kind of starts to sound like a basketball, the 808 I know you hear it in the mid-range, you know The 808 starts to sound like a boom, it starts to sound like a basketball a little bit You know how when you um, have a basketball, you start dribbling it And you hear that little that little mid-range, mid-range type of bouncy sound so yeah, when I take that off, it's like, it's kind of very hard to understand like the mid range of the 808. So usually uh, you can even use a side chain compressor, but uh, me personally, myself, I love to go with the API 2500 on a very light ratio as this is affecting kind of like my whole mix. I'm just kind of like tidying up my whole mix. I'm taking it inside of a basket and it like, it's like dirty clothes. I'm taking it inside of a basket and just like really organizing that bit and cleaning it up. So the Fat Filter Pro C, you could also do something as well. And let's just pay attention to the side chain right here. Um, I feel like the API just sounded better as well because you know, those components as well in that VCA API, you know, bus compressor also helped us too. So let's look. I don't know what to believe no more Like everything I hear is a lie to my face I don't wanna give out the benefit of the doubt I done seen what she on and I seen what she brought Every time I think about these streets to make A nigga mind my own biz I better mind my two cents It's better for me in the end
I don't know what to believe no more Like everything I hear is a lie to my face I don't wanna give out the benefit of the doubt I done seen what she on and I seen what she broke Every time I think about these streets to make A nigga my mind on biz I better my mind two cents It's better for me in the end Every time we spin the block, a nigga start getting them flashbacks Every time I try to take a step forward out of hood, it feel like a nigga running to a setback Gon' finesse a nigga, he won't get his cash back Now I'm bringing up the plug, I need a gas So this would be kind of like a different style of bus compression Where I did have like a side chain filter And I love the fact that the Pro-C lets you pick the DB octave Which is like the steepness of the uh, filter So you know, that's something very important as, as well to know Like this will create kind of like a new characteristic for the compression Like This is like a very smooth type of um, you know slope and this is like a very type of abrupt slope which will produce like a boom 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 it might be a little bit too much for a bus compressor it might sound too abrupt but this one is kind of like very smooth that's what I usually look for in a bus compressor like a smoothing characteristic and that's why I went with a uh, you know the softest knee literally I went with the softest knee that I could go with and um, after that, you know, the ratio is like 1.5, just like on the API. The only difference is the side chain. The API has a side chain in it too, but this one is pretty good, pretty dope because it lets you really like start to dial in that bit, fastest release, as well as, a, um, you know, the same attack. So that's what I'm trying to show you guys too, that, you know, there's a, a use case for both of them. Both of them are great. If you don't have one of them, you can also get the other one. It will all be the same stuff. That's what I'm always trying to tell you guys about, you know, making music and mixing, stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. The tools that you got right now are probably good enough. You got to really look back and be like, damn, you know, a lot of these engineers, they, we all got the same plugins. We all got the UAD. We all got the Waze. We all got plug in the line. We all really got the same plugins. So it's not like back in the day where, oh, yeah, I'm the only person who has this compressor in a like a hundred mile radius, you know, type shit. It used to be stuff like that. Like people had to go to a certain studio because they knew that they was going to get a certain sound. But nowadays, it really just coming down to the person, the engineer, the person who mixing it, how much they love making music. Because you could be great at making music, but if you don't love making music, boy, your shit going to sound ass as hell. Like, no cap. Like, I don't care how raw you is at making music. If you don't love, Love making music as soon as you press play you're gonna hear it that's the thing about me like as soon as i press play on this bit you can already just tell like you could just tell i love making music so you know it's been a, a good experience talking to y'all today i do appreciate y'all if y'all learn anything from my little uh compression type of you know argument digital and analog compressors can both exist you know you can use plugins and hardware pretty much you know it's all the same shit with a different smell just want to say thanks a lot for being a great part of my youtube family appreciate y'all now peace